Good morning. I'm Mo Kiyomi, president of San Jose State University. And it's a pleasure to be with you today to talk about, about a very exciting topic, and that is the creation of an learning, open learning ecosystem. The whole idea of learning, open learning ecosystem is how we can really transform the teaching of science, technology, engineering, and math in our educational system. And it's a great opportunity for me to have my colleague, Ken Palese, to have a conversation about this exciting topic with you. And I'm Kim Palese. I am chairman of Clear Street, a company based here in Silicon Valley, and a longtime entrepreneur and executive here in Silicon Valley. I'm very passionate about the topic of education and specifically uh, the need to prepare the next generation and the current population for 21st century jobs. You know, we, we really are at a tipping point today. Uh, we're at a point where we are requiring a whole new set of skills, and the workers of the 21st century need to possess new qualities, capabilities, skills that, frankly, uh, the workers of the 20th century did not. And at the same time, we have an opportunity to take technology and harness it in entirely new ways to deliver new kinds of education learning systems. Um, really, we've been throwing technology at the classroom and not really achieving breakthrough transformation. And we're finally at a point now where both the technology and the way that we can, we can deliver the technology and the way that uh, individuals, in particular youth, uh, but also our current workforce, can actually absorb and, and incorporate technology in the way that they learn. So we're sort of at this tipping point where need a whole new set of skills, and we finally have an opportunity to achieve breakthroughs with technology and education. I think you're absolutely right that we have to find new and more innovative ways of using these technologies so we can really have the uh, workforce and be able to enhance the quality of uh, life for uh, the whole globe, but especially here in the U.S. as well. The other problem that we have is uh, there are so many distractions for our youth right now. Uh, there are some reports that say now, at least in the U.S., the youth spends about, uh, they text about 3,000 times uh, a month, which if you work that one like about four minutes a text, that works to almost a six hour uh, a day, which means that that's almost like a full-time job for, for any person. So the whole idea of attention economy is really becoming a new concept that we all have to look at. So on one hand, uh, our traditional methodology has not been successful in meeting the needs that we have. And also, as you mentioned, the other part would be uh, all of these distractions. And using technology in the last uh, decade or so in a number of different disciplines, such as healthcare, uh, such as transportation, uh, in, uh, entertainment systems, and others, have really given us breakthroughs. And now it's really the time that we really use these technologies in education in a very innovative and very creative way as well. That's a very good point, well said, and I, I think you're also touching on the, the point that learning is now no longer constrained to the four walls of a classroom or even a certain number of hours every day. We now have, again, the opportunity with technology to take learning and teaching beyond the classroom uh, and enable students of all ages to, for example, instead of uh, being physically in a classroom, to use their mobile devices, to engage in social media and collaboration and new ways of working with other students, learning topics and exploring new ideas together. Uh, so we're, we're now at, a, at, a, at a, again, an opportunity, a tipping point where we can move from rote learning in the classroom for a very uh, constrained period of time every day in a closed kind of silo style education system to an open education system that's 24-7, that's accessible by anyone, to anyone all over the world, uh, and that frankly enables lifelong learning. So the learning doesn't stop when you graduate from school or leave school. The thing that technology really helps us is, is converting closed systems to open systems. And uh, uh, as you mentioned about the, you know, the traditional classroom being within confined to a physical space, uh, now in the, the new technologies, a uh, classroom could be anywhere. And that's where the, the walls that we have between formal learning and informal learning really has to come down. Technology has really caused the death of distance. So it means that we can have teams working together and that could be across countries, across nations, across cultures. And we, we could have 
a faculty member or uh, who could serve as a coach anywhere in the world and have students from any other part of the world and they can all uh, work in uh, virtual teams collaborating. In the same way, I think even if we look at textbooks, uh, a traditional textbook that we have is a closed system. Whatever information that we have is confined within those so many pages of the book. But now as we look at more electronic textbooks, not only we can have the information uh, change on a continual basis and get updated very easily, but also in terms of all of the references that we can have, anybody can go to any part of that reference, hot link that to go and be able to have the access to all of the references when you look at all of the illustrations, the illustrations cannot just be a, a static graph or a picture. It could really run simulations. It could really uh, help us uh, uh, be clips of multimedia where students uh, could, uh, you know, could have a much richer learning experience. And also students can move in the pace that they are comfortable with because that's also another um, uh, cre uh, a strong element of an open uh, learning ecosystem and what technologies really give us is how we can really use, harness these technologies and uh, not on how to do the same thing faster, but how we can really transform it so we can really utilize technology in the most uh, effective and most imaginative way. Yes. And in fact, that is so important in, in this industry, in the technology industry here in Silicon Valley, but frankly, all over the world. Uh, because innovation is really going to be the driver of job creation and societal transformation in the 21st century. We won't be able to solve the kind of challenges we have as a society without having a, a workforce that understands innovation, problem solving, uh, and frankly, how to collaborate and work together. And at the same time, to your point, uh, knowledge and information and, and um, skills are constantly transforming. Uh, so no longer in our industry can you learn a set of information about, for example, a hardware system or uh, a software architecture or uh, a biotechnology uh, challenge because that, that topic, that uh, area of, of, of uh, subject matter will constantly be evolving and changing. So because of that pace of change, our industry, Silicon Valley and the technology industry, and again, more broadly, our society can't afford not to have an education system that is continually retraining and introducing new material and expertise from people who really understand the subject matter. Well, you're absolutely right. The new educational system has to really promote innovation. And part of that, if we look at elements of innovation, of course, the two key factors will be uh, both the sense of creativity as well as imagination. Yes. And if you look at the traditional educational system, Unfortunately, with the best of intentions, many times we have tried to kill that. <laughs> we, as, uh, sometimes I say facetious, facetiously that our educational system sometimes, with the best of intention, has been very effective in killing any element of creativity. Because if we have, if our expectation of a student is to cover what is on those so many chapters of a book, that what the teacher tells the student in a, uh, and recite it, and the student's role is to memorize that and give it back. You know, that really is part of a closed system. You're not really adding new information. So part of our new educational system is how the, t uh, the instructor can really be that kind of a coach that helps students guide them in a path that they may have difficulty in the beginning, but as part of it, in their own creativity, students can find new ways New, in more imaginative ways to be able to solve a problem because we need those uh, that those creative juices yes. of all of our students. We can really have uh, foster the idea that every student find a way to uh, to really enjoy the the joy of creativity, the joy of discovery. Because through that kind of an approach, they can really learn.